Hey, good afternoon. Good, yes, it is afternoon, because it's afternoon here on the West Coast. So if you're anywhere other than the West Coast, it's definitely afternoon, unless you're further west. <laughs> so hello, welcome. Hey, Debbie, great to see you. Glad you're here. Uh, Debbie was just at Rhythmia recently. Good to see you again. I hope your post-integration is going well. Post Rhythmia Integration. I am super excited to talk to you guys today because I have been um, I've been studying some really cool stuff that I want to share with you. Um, the first thing that I want to talk about is the title. The title of today's talk, of course, the the weekly title is Walking the Path, right? Um, and then today's topic is from cause and effect to causing an effect. Hey, Amanda. Hey, Debbie. So great. So great. Hi. Um, uh, so the, the topic from cause and effect to causing effect, right? This is a topic that I have to give um, uh, a, a recognition and acknowledgement to Dr. Joe Dispenza. Um, it's a phrase that I heard in one of his workshops and I really liked it. And it really speaks to, um, hi, Amanda. Hi, love. Uh, it really speaks to, hey, Jill. Woohoo. Um, the ability that we have to be at cause in our lives, instead of being a victim to circumstance, how we can create a predictable future. That's what Joe Dispense is all about. And um, I have some really great information to share with you about this. Um, not only uh, not only the information that I've received from you know study, but also some great information from history. I love history and I love historical examples that reinforce the spiritual principles that we're teaching. So. Without further ado, from cause and effect to causing an effect. Um, so listen, here's the deal. If you are in cause and effect, you are in an old model, right? A Newtonian model of, uh, of, of reality, which is a third dimensional reality that is very slow and, uh, and, and reactive. Okay, so the definition of cause and effect, um, cause and effect, it's like, uh, an action or an event that makes something else happen, right? That's a cause and effect, an action or event that makes something else happen. So like the alarm goes off and I wake up. The cause is the alarm, the effect, I wake up. Um, I knock over a glass of water and the water spills. The cause is uh, the knocking over the glass, the effect, the water spills. Um, I want to get a house, I get a house, that's the cause. The effect is I got to pay a mortgage. This is the reality of third dimensional cause and effect and Newtonian model reality. But the question is, how do we move from a record of the past to a map of the future, right? Because we're living in this habitual pattern, habitual thoughts of, um, of how we feel and how we think. Those thoughts and emotions, those feeling tones, those vibratory feelings. Um, hey, Teddy, those vibratory feelings are a out picture in our body, right? As, as chemicals released in the pituitary gland. Bob, great to see you. Um, those chemicals released in the body, our feelings and emotions, our habitual, habitual thought patterns release as chemicals, either toxic or tonic in the body. So that we literally, the way we think about the day, when I get up in the morning and I'm thinking about my day and I know how it's going to be and I know about those people at the office and I know about my drive and I know about the way, what I'm going to do when I get home and all of that stuff, I'm releasing chemicals in the body that literally genetically predict the way my day is going to go. And so my day is an effect of my past thinking, my past experience, I'm literally using a record of the past to create my future. And my future is just more of the same, right? And then we get in this rut where we're like, hey, I don't like my life anymore. I'm, I'm done. I don't want this. I'm tired. I want to make a change. But we can't get out of this habitual pattern because we're literally coding genetically our future based on our past emotions. And we're thinking and feeling the same way every day. Um, uh, hey, third eye just opened after breath work. This is beautiful. Yes, and this is what we're going to be talking about today, Debbie, is how to open up our third eye to get a greater vision so that we can create a vision that leads us to the future instead of superimposing our past and bringing it into the future, right? What we normally do with this old model of cause and effect is literally take the past 
and just boom, place it right on the future. And we're limiting our possibility. And then we get upset because nothing changes and it's so hard. And it is hard because you're in this, we're in this rote, um, coded way of thinking that we actually become physically addicted to. We become physically addicted to the way that we think, even if it's not good for us. It's comfortable and it's known. And so the body prefers something that's comfortable and known to the unknown, which is uncomfortable and a little bit scary, right? So we naturally default back into the known, which is the habitual pattern, which codes us genetically for the same thing to happen in the future. So here we are talking about a new model, how to go from a record of the past, how to keep, how to stop placing our past and putting it in our future and have a map of the future, creating our map. This is moving from cause and effect, right? Uh, something happens. If I want a new job, I got to get a resume and I got to send my resume out to people. And I, that's cause and effect, right? To causing an effect. What feelings, emotions, ideas, thoughts, uh, elevated emotions, intentions can I have around something in the future that's going to affect my body, my current state in the present, and have my body release chemicals that are going to literally code my being, my physical body, and my mind to be prepared for something in the future. And that something is a match for the way I'm feeling now, right? That is the idea of creating a map to the future. In our life, uh, if the environment is influencing us, we think and feel uh, the way the environment tells us, right? We're at, we're at the effect of our environment. And then we are no more than our environment. Um, and if we think and feel equal to the environment that we're in, we're only going to create more of that environment. So we get stuck. We know how it happens and we can't control the outcome. Um, uh, this is really the this is really the key, right? Is we get stuck in this habitual pattern of thinking and we can't control or create a new outcome. And then we get we get dominated by our environment. We are at the effect of our circumstances, right? Um, so and part of that is we want to know how it's gonna happen. We want to be able to predict the future. We want to know how, right? That's the biggest thing. Well, great, I want a new job, but how? I want to lose weight, but how? I want a better relationship, but how? We get stuck in the how, right? And the how takes us back into the minutia of the third dimensional cause and effect reality. Well, if I want to get a house, I got to get a mortgage. If I want to get a mortgage, I got to have a job. If I got, right? Now we're in this, things happen. Definitely things are happening, but it's really slow and it's really lockstep third dimension, right? But if we let the how be the wow, get that. Let the how be the wow. The how it's going to happen is the surprise. How it's going to happen is, um, is releasing the control of thinking I know how to make it happen because I don't, because this is something unknown from out of the future, not out of the past, right? So I let the how be the wow, how I'm going to get that new job, how I'm going to be in that relationship, how I'm going to get that house. I don't have to know how. I have to know the vision. I have to know the vibratory frequency and feeling of what it feels like when I have the things that I am wanting, right? So what Dr. Joe Dispenza talks about is how do you mirror and marry uh, a, 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 a clear intention with an elevated emotion? How do you mirror a clear intention with an elevated emotion? And what I'm going to tell you is at Rhythmia, Plant medicine and the visionary exercise of ceremony helps us to clear out the cognitive webs that keep us from seeing a clear future and keep us from seeing a clear intention and keep us from feeling, truly feeling the vibratory frequency of what it would be like if we were had everything that we were wanting already. But the key is we've got to let the how be the wow. We've got to let the way it happens be a surprise. It has, has to come to us in a surprising way. So here's a seven-day challenge for you. Um, I want to give you a seven-day challenge to look at your body. One, number one, what is the greatest ideal of myself that I can be today? That's the question to ask in the morning. What is the greatest ideal? Um, hey, uh, Tara Lee, great to see you. Jerry, great to see you. Debbie, thank you. Um, 
So this is the, the seven day challenge. Every morning you wake up and you ask yourself, what is the greatest ideal of myself that I can be today, right? Now you're already moving yourself out of a predictable past, right? The same feelings, you get up in the morning, you get the cup of coffee, you go to the bathroom, you go to the, take a shower and you get in the car and you go to work the same way, these habitual patterns, right? I can break that up by asking the question, what is the greatest ideal of myself that I can be today? And now you're now you are beginning to see something about the future, something about yourself that you're generating instead of being at cause and effect, this low three dimensional lockstep way. You're reaching into the future and creating a vibrational match for that which you are looking to create. OK, so first thing, what can I what's the greatest ideal of myself? Second thing, write down four thoughts that you're going to be conscious of today right? How do I want to speak today? How do I want to act today? How do I want to be in my mind and body today? Write down those thoughts. So the first thing is you're asking yourself a question of what is my ideal self? Who is my ideal? And then you're, you're going to have a, an awareness. How do we break up habitual thought patterns? It's becoming conscious of what you're unconscious of. We have to become conscious of what we're unconscious of in order to change the habitual patterns that keep us locked in the same way of being. So ask yourself the question, how do I want to speak today? How do I want to relate to my coworkers? How do I want to act? How do I want to be in my body? What is the vibratory frequency of my body today? What is the vibratory frequency of my mind? I'm going to keep my mind trained on unexpected good today. I'm going to keep my mind trained on unexpected offers. I'm going to keep my, my body trained on feeling healthy and whole. I'm going to keep my body in the vibratory frequency of gratitude, right? And what the behaviors, what behaviors will I demonstrate today? What choices will I make today? Rehearse these questions. So that's, that's, the, second, that's the, the second part of this question, right? Rehearse these questions and you can teach your body to follow emotionally what it's going to feel like to manifest those things before they manifest. This is the key. That's the key to letting the how be the wow, is that we begin to rehearse these questions and match our uh, clear intention. I want, a, I want a better relationship. I want a different job. I want to live in abundance. Whatever it is, um, now, what does it feel like to have those things? What does it feel like to, um, to have those things already accomplished? Uh, then we start to feel that vibratory frequency, the feeling tone in the body, right? And we begin to generate those feeling tones. Uh, this is the key to letting the how be the wow right? This is the key to teaching our body to follow our mind instead of the mind following the body, right? You get up in the morning, you do the same things, you go to work, you start to feel the same way. The energetic feeling tone of the body then influences the mind, locking us in to an old pattern of the past. We want to create a map to the future. That's what we're going to do. And in doing that, we're going to create uh, from a vision rather than being at the effect of circumstances in our environment. And we do that by creating the feeling tone in our body, right? By asking these questions, these powerful questions. Hey, Jill. Hey, Caribou. Thank you so much for joining us. I'm so grateful you're here today. I've got some great stuff to share with you. So hang in there. There's more. There's more coming. So number, the third thing I want you to do is at the end of the day, uh, generate gratitude, right? This is, again, anchoring in the body, a feeling of gratitude. Feel that gratitude in the body so that when you review your day, you give thanks for what has occurred. If I had to wash dishes, I'm grateful because I had food to eat. It means I had some abundance. If I'm tired, I'm grateful because I gave it all today. If, if, I, uh, if I am in this elevated emotional state of gratitude, I begin to generate this feeling of gratefulness. And um, all we have to do is realize this best case scenario, right? We get caught in the worst case scenario, but we really want to generate gratitude from a feeling tone of the best case scenario. And then I want you to stop and close your eyes and open uh, open up to your surroundings, open up in a way 
that um, allows you to become infinitely present and aware of your of your surroundings and in that way you will decrease your stress hormones and allows you to come into a state of coherence because you're coming into the present right so the whole key is uh, this whole talk so far has been about letting the how be the wow about being the cause ca about causing effect rather than being at the cause of an effect right we are causing an effect and how do we cause that effect by generate by coming to the present by keeping our mind out of the past out of the old ways and habitual patterns by breaking that up and and by bringing, by recalling ourselves to the present moment, by becoming aware of our surroundings, by, by becoming aware of what we're feeling in this moment. Here's an historical example. I love history. So I want to share with you this really cool Enoch, brother Enoch. Woohoo! Great to see you, man. Um, here's a great example from history that shows how to capture, like Debbie said earlier, the third eye right? How to capture the third eye and get the vision, the gestalt vision that will lead you to creating a roadmap to the future instead of recreating the past and putting your past in the future. All right. And here's an example from history. 401 BC, 10,000 Greek mercenaries were fighting on behalf of the Persian king Darius. Uh, he wasn't a king, pardon me. He was a prince, and he was fighting his brother, who was the king. He was trying to have a coup against his brother and overtake the kingdom, right? He got 10,000 Greek mercenaries to come and join him in the fight. Well, here's what happened. Uh, they found themselves on the losing side of the battle, and they became trapped in Persia. So these 10,000 Greek mercenaries were trapped in Persia. The, the prince, uh, who was um, leading the charge, was um, tricked and he and his generals were called to um, to go to meet the Persian king, his brother. It was a trick and they killed them all. So now you have all these mercenaries, these soldiers from Greece that are there stuck in the heart of Persia behind enemy lines on the losing side of the battle and their leaders are all gone. Their leaders are all killed, right? So the survivors thought cause and effect, uh, I'm going to be either killed today or sold into slavery. That's what they were thinking, the ones that were left. And they wandered around the camp, camp that night bemoaning their fate. Dig this. Reverend Cheryl, I love you. So good to see you. Um, so dig this. In So these 10,000 Greek mercenaries, at the effect of the king who has killed all of their leaders, they're stuck behind enemy lines in Persia, 401 BC. Guess who was part of that? Uh, group of mercenaries, a Greek philosopher named Xenophon. Xenophon was a Greek historian and writer. He was basically with this group as sort of a uh, embedded reporter, you know, in the in the BC time, right? He was an embedded reporter, but he studied under Socrates, and he believed in the supremacy of the rational mind and seeing beyond appearances and the fleeting impressions of the duality in which we live in, uh, of the life that seems so real. He believed in seeing beyond that. Um, and uh, uh, so dig this. So Xenophon had a vision. He had a vision of how he and the uh, mercenaries might escape. He had a vision of how they could escape. And he, it came to him, right? Because he was already trained in seeing beyond appearances, right? This is a metaphysical principle that we don't get stuck and caught in appearances. We, get, we, we move outside of appearances because appearances are fleeting. And, but we have a tendency to think that the appearances are fixed. And then we get caught, just like we were talking about earlier, by bringing our past into the future because we're stuck in an old way of being, an old way of thinking, an old way of feeling. We bring those feeling tones into the future. Here's the key, right? If we are not caught by appearances, the, the, the master teacher says, don't, don't get caught with appearances. When he says this, he is not saying that appearances aren't real right? The appearances of being caught behind enemy lines and stuck in Persia with 10,000 mercenaries and all your leaders killed, that's real, right? We're not saying, oh, kumbaya, uh, you know, woo-woo your way out of this. No, we're saying that the unreality of appearances lies in our interpretation of them. Get that. The unreality of appearances lies in how we interpret them. So Xenophon, in 401 BC, stuck behind Persian lines. He's not a military master. He's a philosopher. And he starts to get this vision of, of how they can escape. 
He sees them zigzagging their way through Persia down to the Mediterranean and back to Greece. He sees them leaving everything behind and um, uh, leaving their wagons and being swift so they can get a head start. He sees them having the element of surprise so that he can, hey, cuz, great to see you. Um, he, he sees them having the element of surprise and leaving before the uh, Persians know it so that they can escape. Um, he sees them living off the land and being quick with alacrity, right? So this is his vision. And he, uh, you know, not using wagons, living off the land, moving fast. He mentally prepares the body for this future. The body follows the mind, right? We were talking about that earlier. So as he thought ahead, Xenophon thought ahead of the terrain. He thought ahead of the enemies. He thought ahead of what might be occurring. So he's visioning the future already. He's bringing that into his body. There's been studies that show that if you, if you take someone and teach them how to play the piano, uh, they learn muscle memory from playing the piano. The study shows that if you have somebody watch them playing the piano and rehearse just, just by watching, do this every day for an hour a day for four weeks. At the end of four weeks, the people that watched the person practicing the piano can sit down at the piano and play the piano in the same way that the person that was actually physically doing it. What that study tells me is that our body follows the mind, right? That we can literally, the mind doesn't know the difference between the inner reality and the outer reality, and that by placing our awareness and our attention on something, we literally create new connections in the brain, new neural pathways. It's called neuroplasticity. We literally create new neural pathways before we've had the experience before we've had the experience. We're preparing the mind and the body for something that hasn't manifested yet. And in that way, we're bringing the manifestation to us. We're bringing that to, towards us. We're calling it forth. We're preparing the body and you're ready to go. So in the same way, Xenophon, caught behind enemy lines, 401 BC, starts to get a vision of how he can escape uh, and get home. And he tells all of the mercenaries this. He lets them know. And he was so convincing that they elected him their leader. This is a philosopher, right? He's not a mil military tactician. He's not a general. He was an embedded philosopher, uh, like journalist, right? And here he tells them of this vision and they follow him. They elect him their leader. And guess what? He takes his route down to the Mediterranean and off to Greece, and with no military experience, but with a vision that was complete, he communicated with confidence to the soldiers, and they, again, nominated him as leader. It took him years. It took the 10,000 mercenaries years to get out of Persia and home to Greece, and they had many challenges. But uh, with each challenge, Xenophon applied his larger vision. This is what we might call the third eye in metaphysical teachings, right? He used a visioning, Reverend Michael Bernard Beckwith calls it the, the visioning, the life visioning process, where we open ourselves up beyond appearances and beyond circumstances to uh, make a space available in consciousness for a divine idea to emerge in through and as us. That's the metaphysical teaching of it. We see it in history with Xenophon that he received a vision. He had an idea. He allowed that idea to be manifest in the body and, and prepared himself mentally, creating a roadmap to the future. He was no longer at the effect of a cause. He was causing the effect, right? It took him years. And with each challenge, he continued to apply the larger vision and, um, and, and not being caught in circumstances or appearances, he determined strategies at each moment because he didn't get caught in the minutia of the appearance. Remember, the master teacher says that the, it's not the, that the appearances are, are real, but their unreality lies in our interpretation of them. How are we going to interpret this situation? Am I gonna get caught in a victim mentality that I'm the cause of this, uh, or I'm, the effect, I'm at the effect of this cause, or am I going to generate with a vision something that, that I then become, the, I begin to cause the effect, right? So learn this, most of us are locked in the moment. Most of us overreact and panic seeing only a narrow part of reality. Um, and, and we recreate more of the same situation when we are stuck in a narrow vision of reality, which is the present circumstance, 
right? But if we can become present, not be caught in um, some, you know, fantasy of the future or, uh, you know, what I have to do or what the day is going to be like, not be caught with nostalgia for the past, but be in the present moment and, and be, have a clear presence of mind. I can elevate my perspective above the circumstance um, by elevating the, my emotional feeling tone, right? That's the key, is that the body needs to feel this. Hey, Cousin Joe, wow, love you both. So glad you guys are here. Um, Waleska, hermana, bienvenidos. Um, so glad, I'm thrilled. So the idea is that through becoming present in the present moment, we can elevate our perspective, see a larger vision, and anchor it in the body with a physical manifestation of a feeling tone. This is what Joe Dispenza calls a clear intention married with an elevated emotion. A clear intention elevated with, or married with an elevated emotion, right? I have an intention that I want to live in abundance. Now, how do I elevate that emotion? What does it feel like? What, what is abundance to me? Well, it means I can do what I want. I can travel where I want. I have contracts coming in. Um, I don't have to worry. I'm so uh, abundant, I never have to worry again. Uh, it means that I am not at the effect of uh, getting a paycheck from a job, but I have money coming in in unexpected ways. How, whatever you think abundance is, you then begin to mirror that intention, I want to live in abundance, with the feeling tone of how does it feel? Oh, how does it feel? I already have this. How does it feel? I'm living the life that I love. How does it feel? I have everything that I need. Every one of my needs are met. How does it feel? What does it look like? Hang out in that moment, in that feeling, and now you are elevating your emotion to match your intention. This is the way we create a roadmap to the future and begin to cause the effect of our lives instead of being in a victim mentality where cause and effect rule us based on the narrow perception of circumstance that we can see. This is the key. Elizabeth, hola por vida. Amber Rose, thank you for, for checking in. I'm so glad you're here. All right, so we're almost done. Here's the gig. If we can tap into our visionary powers like Xenophon did and lead the way out of the uh, out of danger, literally, lead the way, we can begin to marshal unforeseen forces. I want to read to you something uh, from a brilliant man, uh, William Hutchinson Murray, who was a Scottish mountaineer and writer. He fought in World War II. Today is, or yesterday was the 75th anniversary of D-Day. He fought in World War II and was captured, spending three years in a prisoner of war camp. And he wrote an award-winning manuscript, um, wrote an award-winning manuscript in prison on toilet paper and it was discovered by the Gestapo and he began again and completed the manuscript and this is the quotation I want to read to you because it speaks exactly to what we are talking about about creating um, uh, and activating unforeseen circumstances and trends in a way that we are unexpected again remember let the how be the wow we don't have to know how it happens we have to know we have to be in the emotional and energetic vibratory frequency of it, marrying a clear intention with an elevated emotion in order to draw forth that future, the roadmap to the future. Here's his quote. Until one is committed, there is hesitancy, the chance to draw back always in effectiveness. Concerning all acts of initiation and creation, there is one elementary truth, uh, the ignorance of which has killed countless ideas and splendid plans that the moment one definitely commits oneself, then providence moves to. All sorts of things occur to help one that would never otherwise have occurred. A whole stream of events, issues from decisions, raising in one's favor all manner of unforeseen incidences, meetings, and material assistance which no man could have dreamed would come his way. Whatever you can do or dream, you can begin it. Boldness has genius, power, and magic in it. Begin it now. This is the, um, the quote from uh, William Hutchinson Murray that, that mirrors what we're talking about. That mirrors Steve Factor. Great to see you, brother. The Steve Factor. Love it. Uh, this is what mirrors this idea of combining a clear intention with an elevated emotion that creates our reality, has us become 
the cause of our effect instead of being at the victim mentality of cause and effect. And how can we, um, how can we create uh, authority in our lives, a personal authority, and possess this almost, you know, this clear ability to what, what others would say is reading the future. Um, I want to tell you, Napoleon, Napoleon did this, and um, Goethe did this. Napoleon was such a brilliant tactician that that the that his enemies thought that he knew their plans, that he must have had some secret intelligence. He just anchored in to a feeling tone and could foresee something. He created a place in consciousness for an awareness to come unforeseen, right? Outside of the current paradigm. Gutta did the same thing. He had an uncanny ability to predict um, future trends. Um, but he did this through an expanded awareness, not because he was a trendsetter, uh, but because he had an awareness of things coming to him, right? So we can practice and develop this personal power and apply it in any situation. And we do this by disconnecting from circumstance. Um, quit worrying about the future or being caught in the mistakes of the past uh, because that sucks our energy. We want to call our energy back to the present moment and become present. We do this through meditation. We do this through breath work. We do this through hacks that help us Come, become present um, and break up the habitual thought patterns. And we bring the energy and thoughts to the present moment, right? With a clear vision and a elevated emotion. And this clarity comes without opinion and judgment about the present moment. It's a clarity of what's so. And then we bring forth uh, something new and unexpected from outside of our current paradigm. Um, we open our mind and entertain other possibilities, and we are able to come to the situation anew. Meditation is the key. I don't want to hear anybody tell me, I can't meditate. Oh, I sit down. And that's because you're stuck in an old way of thinking. Meditation is the key to short circuit and interrupt our old patterns of thinking. It brings us to the present moment, allows us to rise above with an expanded awareness and gain vision. And this is what Reverend Michael Bernard Beckwith from Agape talks about in the life visioning process, right? That through a meditative process, we can open ourselves up to become aware of more than our past experience allows us to see. Because if we're stuck with just what we can feel, touch, smell, understand, and from our past experience, then we have a very limited swath of reality in which to create. And we're just creating more of the same. We're literally bringing our past into the future. But if we can short circuit these habitual ways of feeling and thinking, seeing a clear intention, marrying it with an elevated emotion, and come to the present moment, we draw back our energy from being stuck about the uh, past or worrying about the future, drawing our energy, and we can heal ourselves. We can create something unforeseen. Meditation short circuits and interrupts the old habitual patterns and creates a place in consciousness for a divine idea to emerge, which is the life visioning process as taught by Reverend Michael. Man, this has been a little bit longer than I anticipated, but it was such a pleasure talking about this with you and sharing with you um, a sort of a uh, little bit of history with Xenophon and his 401 BC uh uh, foray into Persia and, and a historical example of how rising above the situation, rising above the circumstance and gaining a vision actually causes that future to occur. We have the ability to do that. We do that by letting the how be the wow. So I'm just going to stop right now in this moment and be so grateful so grateful for you all joining today, taking time out of your busy day to listen to this. Uh, and uh, so grateful for the opportunity to share. So grateful for the teachers. Oh my good, goodness, Reverend Cheryl's on this call. Uh, Reverend Michael, who, uh, you know, Jerry, these are great teachers in my life. So many people in my lives. Uh, my cousins and, and uh, Steve Factor and wonderful people that have been part of my life and, and in my training. Thank you, thank you, thank you for being here. And thank you, this is a great expression of, of uh, the teachings that we all love so much. So knowing the how is the wow, that we as creative individuals moving above circumstance create a roadmap to the future instead of just a record of the past, creating a life that we are loving to live in love with life.
That's what we are all about. Okay, I think this is it. I'm so grateful. Thank you all so very much. Peace and blessings to you all. Amanda, Alyssa, Jill, Debbie, Belinda, thank you. Thank you, thank you. Have a beautiful day. Peace and richest blessings.